Well, the overall market crashed, and let's talk about what's going on. And of course, Luna Classic. If you don't know me already, the name's Connor, not a financial advisor. Don't base any financial decisions on these videos, blah, 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 blah. And let's look at the Luna Classic chart. As always, Luna Classic is essentially unfazed by the market. But I must say, I must say here, this is the hourly chart, right? I must say that we did have a drop when we got the news, right? When we got the news from uh, Fed, Jerome Powell, we'll go over it in a second. Not great news. Not great news at first. We got bad news. It dumped. Uh, and then kind of kind of dovish news and everyone thought that the market was good and that Jerome Powell was good and everything was going to be cool. And then uh, it dumped again because he became uh, bearish or, or uh, hawkish, as uh, they say, over on Wall Street. But not great. Not great stuff, but Luna Classic, Luna Classic holding up very nicely. We are essentially just where we've been. We've been trading here between these lines for since the middle of September. So uh, a while now we've been trading down here. No problems, still holding up strong. I think the community is holding up strong. I think a lot of the excitement, emotion, uh, and all of that around the burn and the staking is now gone. Uh, a lot of people came in, they came out, and hopefully we can hold here. I'm hoping that this level will hold. Of course, I still have ex expectations that we can go lower, but for now, it does seem like we can hold here. The bulls are, the bulls and the bears are basically at an equilibrium, and we're traveling sideways until we get some more catalysts coming into the market. With that said, the catalyst, the 1.2% burn, is now live. I've seen a lot of disappointment across Twitter and in my comment section. Why didn't it pump when the burn went live? Well, we all knew it was coming. So that's how it works in pretty much all markets. Uh, people buy the rumor, right? They buy the rumor around what's happening. They get excited about it. Other people come in because everyone's excited. They start piling in. We see a big pump like we did here. We see this big pump here. And then people start to take profits and then the profits started and then people start to get scared and they sell. And that's basically where we are right now. I think these short term uh, traders are in and out. Most of them probably lost money and they sold slightly lower than where they bought before. And now we're basically back at this equilibrium. We hopefully can turn this area that we're in now into a similar accumulation phase like we had back here. That would be ideal, but we're going to have to wait to see what's happening there. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> um, looking just quickly at the overall news, of course, if you don't know, we got 75 uh, basis point hike. The Fed rate hikes as high as 4.6% before the ending inflation fight. So probably two more 75 basis point hikes to come. So not great for the overall market, not great for the, uh, the economy, not great for assets. Most things are probably not going to do very well going forward. Maybe Bitcoin does do something opposite because people are more and more trying to find a place for their money that isn't directly affected by this, even though right now it is. Even though right now it is, hopefully we can decouple away from this eventually. That's what I'm hoping for Bitcoin and crypto as a whole. We have some news that KuCoin has also pumped billions of Luna Classic into staking as their validator gains 8% voting power. So KuCoin potentially sees some hope and a lot of future in Luna Classic. We also have another word from KuCoin saying that they will not be charging any fees on top of their 1.2% uh, on-chain tax that of course comes from on-chain. It's not anything to do with them. So great news there from KuCoin. Good stuff. We do and then look, and then heading over to the DXY, it is trending upwards, guys. So I'm afraid this isn't looking very good for the markets now. We probably will see some more blood. The crypto greed and fear index today down just one point at 22, and a lot of liquidations coming into the market because people are getting too emotional. Trading on emotion is not what we want to be doing. We want to be staying cool headed in this space, dollar cost averaging, that sort of stuff. If you do want an exchange to dollar cost average onto, there's Binance. They have an auto invest feature, which I'm currently making a video about. It's actually really cool. You can just set it to invest on the hour, on the day, on the month, on the year, whatever you want to automatically dollar cost average you into the market, which is something that I would definitely suggest looking into. And you can get a $600 bonus right now if you follow the link down there in the description. Lastly, just to point out, uh, plan B if you don't know him basically he made this model called the stock to flow model It was very correct until it was wrong, right? But he's been investing he invested once at $400 He invested the second time in the middle of the bear market at the bottom of the bear market in 2018 
at 4K, and now he has just made his third investment at 20K. On top of that, CZ and Michael Saylor still think Bitcoin is a viable option. Michael Saylor actually buying more Bitcoin at 19,851. So you can make a decision what you think about these big guys still buying Bitcoin, still being bullish on crypto. I think it's great. I'm going to continue to dollar cost average. You guys can follow that or you can do whatever it is that you think is right in this space. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.